Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nanolith of Dawn. I am your host, Chad Dominic, or Shadow Fury. Probably gonna go with Dominic for the time being. Anyway, we're having a match between Diamond and Saniac on Vitra. Haven't seen this map in a long time. So Vitra is one of those maps that's very flat, except when it's not, because it actually does not work well with vehicles. Both players, however, are going for bots, so that won't be a big problem. But yeah, for bots, this is essentially an entirely flat plane. No purple whatsoever. So, they can go anywhere. Bit slower on these bridges over here, but it's still fine. So you have shields from Dimefriend and Saniac going for the Cloakabot Factory, and Saniac going very... Actually, both players going very economical at the beginning. Neither one going for any kind of rush. Saniac getting a couple of glaives, which will be sent out in a couple of minutes. Not my minutes. My minutes mean seconds. Looks like they're going for a nice set of three, though, before moving forward. Probably suspecting a few bandits in their opponent's base, and they will get one! Considering how much their opponents are building, it won't be too difficult for Dying Frame to defend. Three Glaives against two bandits is pretty much an even match. Three Glaives against three bandits, the bandits win. So, Dying Frame will get some scout- well, sorry, Saniac will get some scouting in, Dying Frame will otherwise not lose much. That being said, that's assuming Dying Frame doesn't put their bandits out of position right now. Their bandits are set up so that the Glaives can flank them, but it looks like Saniac is not confident in their ability to do that, so trying to avoid that fight desperately while building up additional reinforcements. Saniac, however, is basically just setting back up, trying to go for a mid-level mid fight. And I could see that working. 4-3, to three, Glaives. 5-3, to three, Glaives. There's the advantage for Glaives, for assuming proper micro. At this point, though, Saniac is a bit behind economically, so they'd have to win this in order to have an advantage. They currently manage to get one Bandit for the cost of two Glaives, for the cost of three Glaives, but entirely destroying the Bandit army for three Glaives. Not a bad trade, all things considered. Now the few more glaives coming in there, Dimefriend should worry a little bit. They have a stronger economy than Saniac at the moment, but otherwise Dimefriend is a bit vulnerable. Not too vulnerable, but their main base, I mean the glaives could go in there and start taking out all these lotuses. And since there are no real bandits coming in here, Saniac has a bit of an opening. I'm not sure they're aware of it though, they are trying to poke it out, see if they can actually find something, while also clearing out whatever bandits might be nearby. Good call there. But Dimefriend, now that they have that second convict, will likely start building up more bandits, and Saniac not going for it! Oh, if they went for it, they'd have this! They'd be able to take out at least a metal extractor or two, but no. They're being much more cautious, and that is going to lead to them not being able to accomplish much. The Glaives over to the west here should be able to take out this convict, and if they do that, that's still a massive victory. And actually, a couple... Okay, good. A couple Glaives do manage to get in, do manage to deal some damage. Saniac does get a bit of value. But like I said, the real value will be in taking out this Convict, which these Glaives seem very reticent about doing. Like, Zaniac is playing this exceedingly safe to the point that it seems to be causing some problems, but now they've got that opening, they have that Convict, they take out the Convict, that is a massive blow to Dimefront's ability to expand, and these Glaives not looking to get out of there, though. They are playing this as a suicide mission, and that is exactly what they're going to get. Kind of for their sake, they had retreated a little bit, but it looks like it's not going to happen. At the same time, though, Dimefront coming into Saniac's base, doing far more damage than Saniac did. I mean, Saniac managed to stop some expansions coming in there, and the Conjurer, at least, is going to be able to rebuild immediately. But Dimefront only lost one Metal Extractor. And the Convict. But they had plenty of Convicts already, so while it was a bit of a slowdown, and it does even things out a little bit, Saniac is still having... They're having to rebuild, and they're taking a little while to do so as well. So their economy... It's on par with Dying Friend in terms of metal, it's a bit behind in terms of energy, and they are aware of that. However, they're building wind generators, which are not quite as efficient on this map. The thing is, that's a 0.4 start. 0.4 to 2.5, they are going to get some power now and manage to be able to spend the metal, assuming they had caretakers here, which they are about to get. But that's the thing that they need right now, is to get those caretakers up so they can actually spend that metal. They have the energy with which to do it, but they might be losing the metal as well! Bandits coming in over the left side of the map, and that is going to be a bit of a problem. Saniac. Again, should have enough ban should have enough glaives to stop all these bandits, but they have lost a conjure of their own. So at this point, I'd say it's very much even. Saniac does have a bit better overdrive. They have a bit better of an economy overall for right now, but they're losing metal extractors fast, and they're I just I don't understand why they're playing it so safe. Like I kind of get it. Bandits are scary, and you don't want to advance into an opposing force if you can help it because retreating is just better. It it's a bit complicated, but basically units. The projectiles of units do not follow the momentum of the units firing them, so if you're retreating, you get a slight increase in range. But that being said, this is a 
this is a bit of a tricky situation. We've actually, we're seeing Diferent getting loads of value off of attacking from a retreating position. And that is exactly why Saniac was being so careful. I would like to see Saniac switch over to, to Reavers, though. I mean, they're dealing with loads of bandits coming in here. And yes, we do know that there's a Felon coming up, but Saniac doesn't. Going for Glaives like this just does not seem efficient to me. I do like the Imp, though. That's not a bad idea. But I would like to see Reavers. If we saw Reavers on top of all this stuff, I think it would be a very easy setup for Saniac to win from, or at least to get an advantage from. Even with the Felon, because Reavers are quite high HP. But there is that Imp! That is opening everything up. There we go. So, some value has been had. And if a Conjurer can come in here and start reclaiming this entire field, we've got 750 metal coming in here. So yeah, get a Conjurer on that stuff. It'll be awesome. However, Saniac is not going to attack for them for the time being. They, I, I really want to see them just attack over here. Like send a few glaives over here, send a few other glaives probably over to the eastern side of the map. See what's over there. However, they are in fact going forward, and that's it. They're going entirely glaive mass. They do have the split, however, I was talking about. A bit of a larger split on either side, but the problem, of course, now is that felon, and this is exactly what I was talking about. The Reaver for the Reaver alongside Ronin. Like, this is the point in the game where Reaver Ronin Switch is extremely powerful. You're at plus 30 or so, your opponents have a bunch of bandits, or a bunch of raiders in general, and if they're going to switch to something, especially to stop all of your all of your raiders, they're going to switch to something that either Reaver or Ronin will counter. But at this point, the Felon is slow, so at the very least, it's countered by Glaive's speed. But not, however, by the... I want to say Roach, but I can't remember the name of the thing right now. Sorry, I don't remember what the actual new name of that is. The one unit I actually don't remember the new name of. What was it? Snitch. That's what it was. They got snitched on. They were trying to be sneaky. Someone told on them. They got blown up. However, that has led to a switchover from Saniac to Phantoms, entirely designed to deal with that felon, which I do think is a little bit short-sighted. It will help with the thugs on top of that, but it's just not going to be great for harassing. And right now, Dying Friend... They are definitely more in a backfoot position. They have a weaker economy. Saniac mostly building off of Reclaim and Overdrive, which still, that's money. Money is money, so Saniac getting ahead in that regard. But they aren't managing to get ahead anywhere else, and this is going to be metal use in slight Saniac advantage. 700 metal on that side. Army value is dead even between the two sides. Though it looks like a bit more defense has been built for Dying Throne. But now the army value is going to be completely collapsing as those phantoms find a bit of mileage. Although, honestly, not much. They managed to get the outlaw, but that was about it. Not close enough, apparently, to get that felon. I'm actually just curious why they aren't targeting the felon, of all things. No, not managing to get through the shields. That's the biggest problem. Like, bear in mind, the felon does have... How many shields does he have? 1,600 HP for the shields? And these things deal what? damage. 1,500 damage. So two shots would be able to take care of that felon. But, like I said, this is why I wasn't so confident about seeing these phantoms, is that they'll deal with the felon no problem, but they've been revealed. And there's not much else that's going to actually help deal with the bandits. Sai's doing their best job, but it's still a bit tricky. The phantoms have been totally revealed. The bandits are out to get them, and there's no reavers or anything to stop them. Why, Saniac, are you not building reavers? They are, they are there for a reason. I feel like, is there something I'm missing about the way that Reavers work or don't work? Like, I know they're not necessarily the best against Bandits, but they're still good. Like, they're not as dominant as they are against, say, Glaives. But I just don't get the logic there. Regardless of the Felon did manage to get taken out in the meantime, the Phantoms did do their job, but Saniac's gonna lose their commander in the pro- No, no it's not. Nice jump there, if we can get out of the way of those thugs and the Phantoms can get their health- or their recharge back up in time, but no, that slowing is gonna mean that one Phantom goes down, the second Phantom does not get the shot in to stop the thugs, and that is going to be the death in the commander and the end of the game. Saniac actually had a really good position to work from, but I guess they figured out their commander, they had nothing. But I just don't- like, was there something- I really want to know if Saniac could tell me, either in chat or on the YouTube comments, why no Reavers? I feel like that's something I'm missing, either maybe a metagame thing, metagame shift. Just, they're not, I know that Reavers are not the best thing in the world against Shield Blast, because Bandits are a bit better at dealing with them than Glaives are. But, as long as your opponent doesn't have like 4, four to 1 ratio of Bandits to, to Reavers, you should be able to deal with the Reavers no problem. And Reaver Ronin in general is fine, so I don't, I just don't understand that logic. I think Reaver Phantom, and Steel Blue agrees with me and Jet, Reaver Phantom would have been the way to go. 
because the Phantoms get rid of the Felons and Thugs, the Reavers get rid of any stray bandits, and just generally provide a protective force around the Phantoms, and that leads to a slow push over the entire map, so you can just easily go from... easily go through here, just push down with your Reaver Phantom mix, and there's not much that can stop it unless they go for Racketeers, at which point you can start bringing out Glaives and just overwhelm them. Because at that point you have a decent army, but we didn't see that. So anyway, that is that. The next match, again, due to that same silly bug that I was talking about earlier, I can't actually tell you what the next match is, but it'll go up in the stream thing. So, stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.